Hey, welcome everyone. Tim Marlowe here with Be The Better Local. And we're coming to you live here in our studios, downtown Tacoma, Washington. And we have a special guest for you today. Uh, we have Thomas uh, from all the way from the central states uh, here in the United States uh, in the Texas area. Welcome, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Looking forward to talking a little bit about what I'm doing with you. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> and so our show, uh, Thomas, to highlight um, real quick on what our show is about is to find people within the community that are doing more than going through the motions and that have um, an urge to become better themselves and organically, when we become better ourselves, we provide a better future for um, our tomorrow. Uh, and so this is why I um, created this show is to highlight not only local business here, local businesses here in the Tacoma area, but also to highlight podcasters and influencers. We've um, interviewed politicians and uh, nonprofits. So the idea is to hear about the good news in the community and what's going on in this world today, because I believe we talked about it before, but um, there's too often that we just see negative news in the community. So um, I cannot wait to hear more about your story. Tell us a little bit about yourself, my friend. Yeah, uh, just real quick. As you said, there's a lot of we're hearing all the time the negative stuff that we hear, negative shows, negative, whether it's a podcast or a website. But there's also the opposite of that, too, that's not really shown. And my one of my big inspirations, which I can um, you're going to ask me in a, in a little future down the line, is someone I started listening to his podcast Lewis House and the School of Greatness and exactly what he's doing and it's inspired me to do the same thing as as just just like you're doing as well. Yeah. And it creating creating those positive influence shows. Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Um you know, we had recently met and so uh, again I'm excited to hear more of uh, how everything got started. And uh, you have here that, you know, you've had tech influence within your, your own family for, you know, decades, it seems like. Talk a little bit about the first experiences of uh, just helping out someone that isn't used to technology. Oh, uh, man, you talking about uh, technology is one thing I've always been used to. But what I haven't been used to, and it's it's been in that last three years or so, if I'm not if I wasn't podcasting, talking, interviewing people on my, I don't talk as much. I'm, I consider myself an introvert. Sure. Still am. But when I'm podcasting, it's like you say you, you find your flow. I, I actually, I'm, I'm a video editor. I've been working in digital web sports world for the last decade, mm -hmm. but I found my podcasting way and, when I'm doing that, that's in my flow. When I'm, when I'm, I'm getting, getting better every day, asking questions. I'm, I'm actually starting to go away from actually scripting. Okay. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm having more flowing conversations with my guests and I'm noticing myself branching out with being more conversational. And that's, that was a big thing for me being more conversational. Yeah, I mean, you, you see that often. And, um, you know, my, my wife and I are a power couple team that run this studio here. And, and, and she'll say it too often than none that I'm the in front of the camera. She's the behind the camera person. So we totally get that. And being able to step outside your comfort zone to tell your story, you know, it's, it's very vulnerable and, and it allows you to be unique in this community, which I think we need more of. So for sure. Um, didn't you went to school for all this? Where'd you go to school at? Cause you're here, in, yes. uh, you're over there in Texas. So they got some good schools over there. I'm currently even living in Dallas, Texas, okay. but I grew up, I born in Houston. It's, it's funny. We all have the strange stories like this born in Houston month later. I guess it was too hot for mom. Wanted to go back to where my, where our big family is in New York. So I we moved back there. I lived in New York myself for six years, moved back to Houston, grew up there, went to school and 
started work and, and that's where I went to college out of Huntsville, Texas at Sam Houston State. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience um, in college because, you know, in my eyes, there's it's too often that um, our younger generations are pushed to just go to college to find something. And too often are we just going into a career field or at least an education career field that leads us to a, a degree that really isn't something that we want to do for the next 20, 30, 40 years. So um, obviously you, you've done technology and, and video and, all, and audio stuff for a while. So you knew what you were going into. So how was that just as an experience knowing and just educating something on your own passion? Funnily enough, like when I was I was starting to go in local community college in my hometown for the first two years, <clears throat> and I didn't really like I had I had the idea and it, I didn't really put it together. And I, I was in my community college. I took acting. I took some acting classes. But knowing if you knew me at all, that would be strange in itself. Me <laughs> taking acting. But that somehow led to after the community college and I transferred into the four year school to finish off. And <clears throat> that led to me choosing media mm -hmm. communications and going through school. I was, I quickly learned my, my, about, my, about myself that I, I'd always consider myself like you saying, well, I think you said your wife mm -hmm. that I was the, the behind this camera type <laughs> person. So like one class that I was in, in school and I can go into what, what college actually did for me. There's, there's all this back and forth about is education good or not? I mean, I think it totally is. Mm -hmm. And it gives you that, that stuff, not, not in the way people think, but what this one class I sat in and what really propelled me was it was it was the TV studio class. We were shooting a magazine club magazine show for our class production in the studio. And I was I think I'd signed up initially as floor director in the TV studio there. And all of a sudden all of a sudden I we were going through shooting and our teacher came over our, our headsets. It's like all of a sudden the op op opportunity came up for the production director, the director role up in the control room. And I was on the floor with the cameras, with the talent. And I just volunteered myself, not kind of knowing what I was getting into, but it turned out kind of the best thing that happened to me because it propelled me if it, i actually found out i like doing that i i would move on after that to go into producing and directing the school's local newscast for huntsville cable channel seven wow wow you know i i love the fact that um you mentioned and this is something that um everyone should really just dial in real quick. And it, it was just the fact that you didn't know what to expect from it, but you tried anyways and you ended up loving it. So it just goes back to the fact that we only know what we know as a, a human. We only know what we know as a, a father or a husband or an employee. But when we expand our minds into something that we've never done before, we, uh, we, we start learning more about ourselves and it can be a good you know, thing or a bad thing. We fail all the time, but when we, you know, hit that, you know, when we hit it in and it, and it, you know, hits us with the passion there, you know, it, and we're like, man, I wish I would have known this for years. Uh, and you would have probably started earlier as well, but again, it's all part of our journey. So, um, awesome. Awesome. So being in school, um, uh, to me was, was great, but, what I do now, um, broadcasting and, and recording, podcasting and all this go, uh, good stuff, I wish I would have gone to school for this. And, it, you know, Sadie, my wife and I talk about this all the time, about wanting to just what would it look like just to go back for this course or this course, just to allow us to be better as um, producers and, and editors to become better. So um, it's, it's good to have you on our squad, my friend, because you know all this stuff that we're, lear we're learning from. So 
Um, well, let's uh, continue on. Uh, let's talk about uh, why uh, and what you're really setting out to do, uh, because knowing what you know, there's a lot of education to uh, that we can learn from you. So talk a little bit about um, what you're setting out to do with your podcast and everything. It started out with just being in film. I, I, I was keeping keeping on hearing. And you brought this up, but I think I think when open or close to open, it we it came up when you that you brought up that uh, the my reason was I kept seeing and hearing lack of ideas in the film Hollywood. Wow, what what we know Hollywood, and I was like, really. I, I I wouldn't really wanting to believe that, but it kept. But you, they're they're running out of ideas. They're running like no, like it's not. And I decided to after joining the School of Greatness community and after listening to that podcast, I was <clears throat> I was inspired to say let's start this conversation and connect with people who are directing editing yeah. and i just let's, recently let's debunk it right yeah let's, let's figure out if this is true or not because this can't be true i mean i mean we're seeing you know films being remade after about 20 or 30 years and then it's a new generation that's liking it but the the second or third generation's already seen it once or twice so it kind of seems like that's that's true to a sense so um so yeah tell us more about the story with your podcast and and what you started and who are all the people that you started to interview because i think it's really interesting here my first guest kind of first guest debunked that right away and yeah. that that was a good start He's he was a commercial film director out in L.A. Los Angeles doing doing that thing. He had actually worked with some con had some connections with my like favorite sports down in Houston, and you were we talked about that in my first episode ever. It was he's a comedian. He did he if you ever familiar, it's out on Prime actually. Jordan Brady and I battle okay. comic. That was that's who I first talked with, and that's yeah. Well, as the the journey continues, um, let's give a shout out to that one um, school of greatness that in podcast that you had talked about that kind of um, changed your um, your thinking with it. Um, so, who, who was that again? Lewis House. Okay. Uh, he's from Columbus. Lived in he. His story, if you ever listened to, he tells it multiple times in episodes. Mm -hmm. he, he's New York. He's out in L.A. now. But every and every year he started four years ago a, a thing conference event where we can all get together and he put speakers together and it's a big old weekend mm -hmm. actually and there's weekday festivities before the weekend too that that he has and it's it's all about networking meeting people and just getting inspired yeah yeah i mean we we definitely understand the power of networking and, <clears throat> and it's not necessarily to network for a sale but honestly when you when you start to get to know people their story uh you see the passion behind what they really love and you can kind of, you can get behind someone who is living for passion more than someone who's just trying to pay you an extra dollar because they're, you need another sale for a company. So I love that, man. Um, let's talk a little bit about this uh, social dilemma um, uh, in, on Netflix. Cause we have it written down a little bit and it's in, and Sadie and I have watched it a handful of times and, mm -hmm. It's really crazy um, if you think about it in a sense how much um, power these tech companies have, how much they're um, really, you know, honing in on what we're doing every time we pick up one of these devices here. And, um, and, and it continues to still just be in the air exactly how much control they have of this content because you know we're we're seeing it continuing now with the elections and and politics and and censorship of um of posting and all that stuff so talk a, a, a little bit about um your experience with that um social dilemma 
Well, at the end, I like that they actually gave you a few tips at the end when they're rolling through the credits. I like that they give you, and the first one, it's something I do, and Lewis talks about, and he did the idea of the detox, and, well, that's not, de- detox is a good idea, but the first one they brought up was don't don't sleep with your phone. Don't have your phone by you at, at your bedside, and that's that's good advice, but I I try to at least I'd love to actually go through. I usually when I'm working, I have to take my computer or s- something with me because I have to like do work. I actually went not took a vacation where I didn't actually where I didn't have to do any work at all for a week, and that was it was like first first time coming in five years. But I I want to like go take a trip one day past when everything clears up again and I want to take a trip and actually not go with my phone computer or tablet is fine but but having having information just in your pocket in your hand all the time 24/7 is can be a really it's stressful it, it it's, takes it's, it takes puts- a lot yeah, and and it puts anxiety. I mean, I you know sometimes you can just feel the buzz of the electro, you know, you know just how much power it has in my pocket. Sometimes it just it sometimes weighs me down um, metaphorically, just because it, if I want to relax, sometimes I I seem like when I first sit down, the thing is to pull out the phone to relax, but really that's not relaxing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's again, overstimulating. And, you know, one thing I like about my iPhone, not that I want to, um, promote Apple at all, but one thing I like about this phone, it tells me my screen time. So each week it tells me how much screen time I'm either adding or declining. So yeah. I get excited about the weeks that I had less screen time. I'm like, okay, I think I did something good <laughs> out of the business though, though. And so I had to kind of, you know, keep that hand in hand, um, making sure that we're not, uh, losing business because I'm not on my phone as much. So we got to find other ways. So great ways for computers computers as well. Um, let's talk about your show. Um, let's talk about, uh, how often you're, you're interviewing people and, and if you're dropping episodes and when can people expect, um, for new shows. And, and again, let's reiterate wh- what your show is called again. It's called keeping it real with the film world, right? Or in the film world. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's correct. And I want to just touch on, on that too. When we, having a phone in your pocket and you you have the urge to get to it sometimes you have that urge or you feel that buzz even if you don't have in your pocket too yeah and that's that's where we've got where that's where we've come to is for to have that feeling even if you don't have the phone yeah physically but uh, yeah keeping it real in the film world i suits i look to produce at least once a week and i'll have a long form up to an hour i don't want to usually take more an hour of the guest time or the listeners time for that matter and then i'll have a few shorts that i just put some of my ideas out that i've been I'll, i jot down some thoughts and just start talking for five ten minutes and i'll have those episodes too weekly or so yeah. Um, well, talk about your podcasting journey real quick before we find out how to find everything. Um, as a podcaster myself, I just, I think it's an amazing journey being able to get on the mic and meet new people and, and really just talk about what I love to talk about because um, you don't know you're a podcaster until you realize that you're behind a mic and you can't stop talking. And then you become a podcaster because now you can't stop talking. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting more in, into that too. That's surely becoming true. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate everything you do, my friend and, uh, everything that you have going on because we need more people like you and I that are, um, taking a chance, telling our story and then broadcasting it because if not, then we're left with the same run around movies that Hollywood keeps producing. Right. <laughs> And, and Lewis and I got into I, I know it's a long time coming but I got into the big one the Joe Rogan experience too okay like, I love those I just I, I see that podcasting is just the opportunity to have a conversation yeah 
Yeah. And, and I love being able to have these conversations and for either future or past conversations, how can people find you, your podcast on social media and the other platforms for podcasting? I do. All, I put up all my posts, keeping it real dot pro. I, I chose that. I to have keeping it real dot pro and I'm on the mi- some of the major destination out there, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Mm-hmm. I just got out on Amazon Podcasts. When they when they opened that up, I, I got myself on that too. iHeartRadio and Spotify mm-hmm. as nice. well. And again, tell us your um your website again because let's make sure we get the spelling on it so no one finds the the R E A L. So it's keeping it real, R E E L as in film real dot pro. I love it, man. This is awesome. Thank you, Thomas, so much for being a part of our show. Uh, we love hearing your story and what we're going to do from here is see what we can do to just continue the relationship. So if there's anything that pops up that we can help you with, let us know. We want to be able to grow your podcast, your story, and um, we can't wait till this kind of pandemic's over so we can kind of come together face to face again. Cause um, that's one thing that my wife and I want to do. We want to go travel. So uh, we want to do a podcast tour eventually and come see everybody that we're interviewing across the world. And hopefully that's one of you um, that, Oh, yeah. Hopefully that one place is in Dallas one day. So again, thank you so much, Thomas, for being a part of um, our story. Uh, we love hearing about yours and anyone that is listening uh, or watching this, uh, check out the scroll text and all the links to be able to uh, find Thomas and his podcast uh, um, with all those different platforms and then go to his website as well, which is www.keepingitrealreel.pro. So again, thank you everyone. And until next time, be the change needed in the world today. We'll see you.